she I was like, okay, I was like, read the Quran, say it to Allah. Like, you never know, like, what could yeah, happen? They go into this house. She goes, oh, are you gonna come in? I said, yeah, just give me a minute. Stop <laughs> Allah. Alhamdulillah. And then I put my right foot in, went inside. <laughs> so and then she goes, oh, come inside properly, close oh, the door. And I oh, said, wow. okay. I go inside. I'm like, walking in slowly, and I see her husband sitting. <laughs> who passed away yeah and um i think it's been yeah it's been four years since since she died mm -hmm. today mm. Um, i shared on my story and um yeah so i got her story and then yeah unfortunately what happened happened mm -hmm. and then um it was interesting because many people were like how did you get like her story or like how did yeah. you get you know things that she hasn't even shared with others mm -hmm. how did you get it and I was in February of 2018. Right. And then I had my first ever book event in July 2018. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How did it feel once you had it in your hands? Like actually the real tangible thing that you've made? I can't, yeah. I can't explain it. Um, it's... it's <laughs> Paper Trials Podcast, it's your boys from Inspire, Mohammed. I'm back in the first time actually in the studio. So yeah. yeah, I'm joined by obviously a man who's been running the show recently. Oh, nice uh, try. And yeah, we're joined by a very special guest today, uh, Mohammed Mahmoud. Um, I'm going to give you a little intro, um, kind of put together from various bits online. Uh, uh, so before we start, because obviously last time man, we had another Shamaki. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. Last you time we had another Shamaki. meal no of two Shamakis. <laughs> oh so, wow. So what do we do here? <laughs> Two man. He's MM. I'm MI. MI. Okay, cool. M &M, we'll, yeah, M &M, M &M. we'll try that. We'll try that. Because, yeah, we had, we had another Shamaki on the last guest. But, yeah. Oh, nice cool. Time. So, I'm going to intro you. Um, and then I want you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit. Awesome. See if it aligns with what, what I've got. Yeah, cool. cool. <laughs> so, Mohammed is the founder and published author of an international platform called Somali Sideways, publishing three books through the platform. Um, Somali Sideways began as a photo project that is looking to focus on repositioning perceptions of Somalis and the diaspora. Uh, people who often suffer from negative stereotypes. Mohammed has traveled to more than 23 countries to deliver this message, uh, participating in speaking engagements, panel discussions, book events, and signings. Um, would you say that's uh, that aligns with you, your view of yourself? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it uh, pretty much summarizes it, you know? How, um, how would you introduce yourself then? Normally, whenever I, like, uh, I'm going on some sort of public speaking or, yeah. or, uh, or an event, mm -hmm. um, I tend to basically say, like, you know, um, more about Somali Sideways, um, how I started it, um, what's what, what's the reasons why I started it. Yeah, um, and we'll get in into the future that. as well. So yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll get into all of that. That's a good question in the future because uh, I didn't write that down in my notes. But yeah, um, we also ask a bit about your background, yeah, your yeah, yeah. early like um, introductions into creativity, writing, photography. Um, so yeah, tell us a bit about yourself. Like when you were growing up, were you? Quite a creative individual was there anything that really inspired you growing up yeah yeah um ever since i was um i would say in college mm -hmm. i was very interested in creativity mostly photography um i would be taking photos like in every day wherever i'm doing yeah. random stuff mm -hmm. um and then i would just collect it and then i thought to myself let me share it online so i shared it on my personal instagram mm -hmm. and um and then i thought to myself let me i want to use these creative skills into sustaining um, some sort of impact or creating some sort of impact. Yeah. So then I thought to start where where else to start from home, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started it um, by interviewing Somalis. Um, oh, sorry. Initially, at the beginning, I started taking photos of yeah. Somalis. Yeah. Um, was random. that just random then? Yeah, random. Yeah, yeah. Just so finding a Somali just yeah, random. Quick snap yeah, yeah. obviously I'll get them <laughs> with permission. their consent. Yeah, yeah with their consent. <laughs> um, uh, normally, like uh, they're very like friendly. I haven't had pretty much no issue until now. Mm. Um, in terms of like getting people if they're willing to get their photos taken and whatnot mm -hmm. um, and then yeah I started mostly it was people that were from my dad's generation so I started taking photos from there mm -hmm. and um, then I started getting taking photos of random Somalis mm -hmm. um, and then I thought okay let me like make some sort of project with what I'm doing yeah. um, and that was what I you know I thought to myself at least you know it's a hobby that I could carry on and sustain and then who knows where it can go mm -hmm. um and then i started taking photos of somali standing sideways um and then yeah a lot of people were just a bit baffled uh, yeah. even when i was doing the project <laughs> i was a bit baffled yeah. why sideways um 
you know, even there's a pun that people use sideways in a negative way. Yeah. I've seen like, oh, you have to yeah, have yeah. it, they use sideways. Like, yeah, yeah, why are you looking yeah, at me yeah. sideways? Yeah, sideways. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So then people were like, what the hell is this, you know? Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I didn't know what this project was um, <laughs> yeah. going. I just thought, let me just continue on the trend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah. And then here we are today. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. publishing books. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Speaking to people, traveling. You know, back then when I started this project, if someone told me that, oh, fast forward, you know, yeah. eight years down the line, oh, you'd be doing all this. I'll be, I'll be telling them, yo, take it easy, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm yeah, probably yeah. going to quit this after a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, yeah, alhamdulillah, here we are today. So, like, so was it eight years ago when you started writing the book or like, like when you were putting the book together or was that when you just published it as a platform? Yeah, so I started the um, the platform in 2014. Okay. Um, was that like Instagram or? Yeah, Instagram, okay. yeah. So then, funnily enough, uh, I never had a personal Instagram page. I had it in the beginning and mm. then I changed it to Somali Sideways. Mm. And then I carried it on for for a while, like maybe mm. up until 2017. 2017 was when I had my personal Instagram. Right, right. So from, I would say, yeah, from I started this project 2014 to 2017 for three years, um, I didn't have a personal one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then it was interesting because a lot of people didn't know it was me that was doing the project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then whenever I go to like events, um, whatever events, whether it's um, conferences or, you know, Somali re- related um, yeah. fundraising or things like that, people will be talking about my project yeah. mm-hmm. and then I'll be just sitting there and I'll be like asking them questions yeah. and then they'll be like, yeah, I really like this project. We want to know who this person is, okay, whatever. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I was like, okay. Um, I was basically that artist. Um, what's that Banksy. Banksy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Banksy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously for him, like no one really knows up until now since he started. Yeah. I don't know how he does that, but um, yeah, for me it was only like three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then I did my own personal one and uh, that's when the book, idea came about 2017 Mm -hmm. uh, 2018 um and then my friend was like you should like do a book at least have have something tangible Mm -hmm. that people can take home Mm -hmm. um so you know whatever happens to you people will still have the books and people can still get it online Mm -hmm. so i thought yeah that's a good idea Mm -hmm. but then the trick was i had to show my face okay at some point well so you didn't really want to show your face beforehand or was it kind of you kind of like that anonymity i did for a while because um, it kind of makes it more about the book and the people rather than yourself that's what i yeah. wanted the uh, people to take away yeah. from i didn't want people to be like oh yeah this is the guy yeah. that did this project i always tell people that this is a people's project yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. nothing it's not me i would i would like to say that i'm a facilitator yeah basically facilitating people's stories people's stories and, like, yeah. you know with their permission showcasing online yeah or making into a book Mm. or doing a a photo exhibition where Mm. you have little extracts of their story so then things like that that's what i would do but it would be you know i wouldn't put my face yeah yeah, yeah, of course but obviously doing a book um you know obviously doing book signings yeah speaking about my book Mm. um on a platform you're gonna have to be more present exactly Uh i have to be there so it was a massive like uh transition because i'm more of an introvert Mm -hmm. yeah um, so me talking to people was, you know, I was I would freak out. Yeah. I'd say you speak um, very well. Though, I'm sure now yeah. I when do. I first uh, yeah. met you, it was at another event. So that was a literary natives event. Yeah, that was yeah. way back. I think that, that was, was like 2019, 2018, something like that. Yeah, exactly. That was, I would say, the starting point of me speaking to people online, uh, right. um, face to face. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that's, yeah. But to kind of bring it back um, a bit, just so our audience can also know a bit more about you. Um, before you kind of got into the the photography, um, what were your like um, inspirations beforehand to try and get into creativity? Were you reading books when you was younger, or were you was it kind of a thing where you like watch movies and then decided to go into photography, or what was kind of the build up towards that? Um, if there was start any, with like a do you start with like a phone or was it camera? Yeah, or yeah. So I started with my phone, um, and then I don't know. For me, like I was always that sort of creative uh, individual yeah i'll be that guy in class um when i was younger i would always daydream yeah like, mm-hmm. i'll always be you know looking around yeah, and yeah, yeah. whenever there's like parents evening you know <laughs> teachers would be like oh yeah your son's always like wandering i was like yeah, 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 yeah. You know? have a report and there was like a, a theme everyone was saying yeah. kind of similar things mm. and whenever i'm daydreaming i'm not obviously just like daydreaming for the sake of the sake like a lot of things were going through my mind mm. You know, like when I was in prim- early primary school, secondary school, moving into that, yeah. like I was thinking, you know, I want to get into art or creative yeah. art or things like that or th- any form of creativity. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you think that, that stemmed from? That 
That's a good question. Um, uh, I feel like it's always interesting. Do you have any yeah. like older siblings or your parents that I were kind of? My, I think it probably stemmed from my dad yeah. because he wasn't a, like I would say a creative, but he was someone who was talented in sports. Okay, yeah. Um, in particular, basketball. So yeah. you know, he. I don't know if you guys know. Back in the days, um, I read you know, about basketball it. was like a massive theme. Somalia, yeah, especially yeah. before the war yeah um and my dad was part of the part of that sort of okay, generation yeah, yeah, yeah. you ever you ever one-on-one him i i don't i'm not really good at <laughs> basketball, so he'll probably take me Fair on. Enough. yeah he's even old now he'll probably take me on now yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah so my dad he was very interested in basketball at that age around that mm-hmm. age so then that was his sort of epiphany he was like i want to get into this yeah. but obviously for him it was a it was way more challenges you know because mm-hmm. yeah. he's from a little village outside like in, in the Hiran region. Mm. So, um, that's where he lives. So, around there, going to Hamar, it's like, I think, three hour drive or something. Okay, so yeah, he lives yeah, in a village, basically. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. He, he had a dream of going to the city. So, mm. it's like someone from here, you know, from a, some sort of small town, yeah. Yeah. had a dream of going to London, to London yeah. and moving to London and trying to make something from London. Yeah. So, that's what he did with basketball. That's really um, cool because yeah, so you just imagine like in the village was like was there a basketball course? Have you got pictures of that? Yeah, like, yeah. There was probably like I think there was a few, but not right. much. So yeah. basically, if there was a match, everyone know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Come on, yeah, all the guys are playing. Exactly, <laughs> which was good because there was a lot of um, individuals like uh, that was scouting youngsters, yeah. mm-hmm. like looking around, seeing if they would be interested in doing a trial, going to Somalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how my dad got the opportunity. Mm. Um, but then that meant that he had to leave yeah. his village, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was a big unknown for him. It must have been tough because yeah. Somalia is very like community based. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. like everyone around you is literally what builds you up. So exactly. when you're by yourself, it's like you're literally. It feels like sometimes you're isolated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Alhamdulillah, he he did what he wanted to do. Yeah. He just started traveling around, representing Somalia. Um, he's been to, like, uh, I would say, yeah. Um, I've been to more countries than him so far. Mm. But when I was younger, he, he he's, he's even been to places I've never been. He yeah. even went to uh, Iraq before like okay. the war happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, he went to Libya. Yeah. He went to Morocco. Um, he went to Tunisia. He went to Algeria. Um, and obviously East Africa representing. Yeah. So yeah, he went to a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Until this day, I'm speaking about it because... He's actually in Canada now, oh, and yeah. there's a Somali week happening in Canada, yeah. and in Minnesota, I believe. Yeah. He's in he's in Toronto, mm. so he's basically like still part of the organizing or the Al committee. Okay, um, yeah, still does doing that till this day. Till now. this day, yeah. yeah. Serious. So does he do speak or work as well? Then, like, does he go and do yeah, talks? Yeah, yeah. He he speaks yeah. in front yeah. of people. He like gives medals to all the kids that or Yalka mm. that won yeah. the yeah. tournament, or whatever. Give them trophies. Mm-hmm. Uh, while they're celebrating, he gives it to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so like, like still uh, going on. What's that thing? What's that guy? I don't know who gives the UEFA Champions League, but yeah. that guy basically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, how would you say that influenced you? Because, you, you, like, you say that, like, you grew up as an introvert. Was he? Would you say he was quite introverted? Oh, absolutely or? not. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. that's the weird <laughs> yeah, thing about. It. Like, my parents opposite. are like social butterflies. Like yeah. me, I'm like. I'll stick to my room and it like yeah yeah, yeah yeah my mom I would say she's in the middle mm-hmm. but my dad he's like any opportunity of him speaking to people he'll just go and take go it. For it yeah, yeah, yeah. any event he's been invited to he's there mm-hmm. speaking about it and whatnot me it was a gradual stage yeah yeah gradual stage I think what helped was you know I think because my dad I see him doing it mm. so in my mind in my mind I'm thinking like okay if he can do it yeah it's possible I, yeah, know, yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was a it was a big struggle though obviously and I'm <laughs> yeah. sure like once upon a time he wasn't that good of a speaker or anything. funnily enough like I've been hearing stories of him being like very extrovert when even when he was young yeah, you know? yeah. like speaking to random people in the village mm-hmm. he was always that person you know yeah. making people laugh comedian whatever mm-hmm. you know stories telling people stories even when he came back to the village of all these places uh, yeah. that he went to, telling them about it, whatever. Some of them haven't even like wouldn't even dream of going to these places. Yeah, that's Some the of them beauty of going to Hamad. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy because it's only three hours away when you think about exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Like it seems like a, a big distance when you're young and it's like yeah. a village, but then like after that, you're like three hours is not that that long of a distance. No, no, it's not. Um, yeah. So I was gonna ask you also, like you triggered my thoughts in terms of. Um, you've created this uh, as a thing for Somalis. 
um, have you, like during your travels and your experience, have you encountered any other um, people from other ethnicities that have tried to create uh, similar projects? Because funnily enough, someone that I, I had met online, they were doing something similar for Ghana. They were creating like a Ghanaian magazine kind of thing to like showcase different people from Ghana and their different backgrounds and stuff. And he thought for some reason I was Ghanaian. <laughs> Oh, so I was gonna, yeah, I was like, I don't know how, how on earth you came to that conclusion. That's he DM'd me, innit? I was like, ah, bro, I'm from yeah, Madonna, yeah, bro. It's got that energy. But, yeah, I was like, I like eggs, bro, but nah. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I was like, actually, I actually want to get him on the podcast. But have you experienced like any other people doing that kind of project? Or Yeah, yeah, um, I've seen people like, um, like, for example, I was invited to go to China mm-hmm. um, in some rural village. Um, and yeah, I mean, Oh, I, c- I could talk for a while for that experience. It was so weird. <laughs> we'll but, bring you back on. Um, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, but when I was there, um, there, I saw a lot of people doing creative work in yeah. their countries. Um, so in a way, it's all a form of storytelling. Um, everyone's doing their own techniques mm. in order to like create positive impact in their home communities. Yeah. Where it is. So um, there's a girl that I know that's in Lahore, Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And she her way of dealing with it was through film. So she's like, um, like creating short clips of films Mm. of issues that are affecting whether it's in Lahore, Pakistan as a whole Mm. and uh, doing it in a visual format. Is that just for random people in Lahore or? Uh, People, well, I'm I'm assuming it's people that she knows knows, and, um, and she creates some sort of team. But, um, but yeah, like maybe I would say, yeah, she would probably Mm -hmm. speaking to random people if they were willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think, around them areas maybe they're not willing to uh, showcase yeah. their face on um yeah on a platform yeah. especially if it's a controversial Topic, issue yeah yeah but it's very like uh there's some issues that she doesn't want to do because if she does do it it will backfire hard so she's like treading on thin ice and being very selective but mm-hmm. that's her that's her way of doing it and then there are others doing photography mm. others doing poetry um and yeah mm-hmm. Coming back onto the book, um, now that you mentioned, because I, I think that's one of the people that I actually write, wrote it down. So there were some notable locations that I saw that, that I was like, what, what else am I doing here? Like, we, we know we're well traveled, but <laughs> it's also funny because um, when you speak to like other random communities, yeah. um, a lot of people don't actually know who Somalis are at all. Like, I, I found that as well. Yeah. Like, which is weird because we think like we're the center of the world kind of thing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah so like... Because our pride, man. We're very yeah, proud that's of our pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also like like growing up in like the state, like urban London, for example, there's a lot of us as well. Like we, we have like little pockets where there's a large community and then for some reason we feel like everyone knows us, which is yeah. very weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's weirder when you find out that people don't know what Somalis are or what language we speak, because a lot of people think, think we just speak Arabic for some reason. Yeah, a lot of them think that we're Arabs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I came across a lot of that when I was like, especially in the Middle East, mm-hmm. um, a lot of them were like, oh, are you Aswani, are you Egyptian, um, or are you Moroccan? I got some weird ones, yeah, yeah, Yemeni, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sudan- Sudanese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay, no. And then they're like, oh, you're, I'm Somali. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, Okay, so to come about Arabic, you speak Arabic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said nah, and they're like <laughs> confused. They're yeah, almost ashamed yeah. of but us. Then, <laughs> but then they they give a valid point, which is our fault, and uh, you know what that is. They don't. They teach it in Arabic in schools and stuff, no. In that Somalia. too, but that's like I would say number two. What well, Muslim um, is it? Obviously, Somali number one, and yeah. then Arabic number yeah. two. But now I think English is on a par with yeah, Arabic. Yeah, yeah. But we're part of the Arab League. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So a lot of them were like, oh, what does that even mean, though? You're part of the Arab League. Arab League so yeah. everyone in the Arab League should be Arab. Should be Arab. Which, logically speaking, makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So then how can I, when I say to them, I'm like, ah, oh. uh, then uh, I yeah. say, ah, oh, it's for interest purposes. You I know, point to the EU. Purposes. I'm like, there's not a lot of, all the EU countries aren't fully European, if you think about it as well. So, Who? like, uh, Turkey's part of the EU, right? No, no, no. no. They're not. Uh, they want but to. They, but part of their country is. Is located in Europe uh, geograph- uh, geographically, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. half of it, part of it is in Asia. Like that's yeah, another thing. You're talking about like Azerbaijan. Yeah, those kind of uh, areas. Uh, them areas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Georgia and yeah, Armenia. Yeah, yeah. 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 Call me up on my geography. Yeah. For, like Eurovision. So you think to so, okay. Yeah, exactly, Euro- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, even Israel's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Israel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, they can never be. I don't know Arab idol. I don't know what their version. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, notable locations. Um, Ivory Coast was a very interesting one. I saw some of these that were raised in Ivory Coast. Yeah, that one raised girl. Raised in Ivory Coast. Raised in Ivory Coast. Um, New Delhi. Uh, and then you yeah, said like, the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I found that really interesting. Like, yeah. South Africa as well. Mm, so, how did you come across like all of these people? And, like, 
in terms of like inviting them to publish into the book as well so like you've given all of these people an, uh, an advantage to become published as well kind of thing so they all had a part of it. they're kind of co-authors cool technically as well yeah, of course. so like um like in terms of all these people how did you find them and what was like the acceptance criteria as well for like getting into the book and yeah it's a good question yeah so when i started interviewing people um it would be like general things mm -hmm. um and then i would ask them like further questions so say for example um if they're like an academic and they're doing a phd on some sort of subject mm -hmm. at university and then i'll be like okay are you the first to do a phd in your family mm -hmm. and then they would say yes they're like okay if now that you're the first like what lessons would you bring to you like when you have like children and things like that what would you want to tell them and then they would give me an answer and then i'll just keep digging deeper and deeper mm -hmm. and then somehow I'll, I'll have like a collection of like a story that I would like have to edit and go through mm -hmm. and then I'll send it to them if they're happy with it and if they are the majority of them are and then I'll basically share it online so did you meet all of these people then like or interview them online or something or yeah so every the majority one? of them I did meet them um, so initially in the beginning um, before I published the book and when I was doing the project whenever mm -hmm. I would travel I would share online and be like hey guys um, I'm here in I don't know yeah. say minnesota yeah i'm in minnesota um if any of you are interested in being part of the project let me know and then you know i'll i'll make sure that your story gets hurt mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. and then many people will like shout me out and say hey and then i'll create a location everyone's there get their story get their picture all that stuff and that's how i got um ilhan omar yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. get her story which was yeah i mean it was interesting and yeah our opinions of Ilhan Omar, but you can put that to one side. Yeah. But at the time when I was getting her story, um, you know, I thought to myself, okay, like she's a, like over there, it's like a, a council councilman, basically councilwoman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But over there, you get paid for it. Over here, you don't. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's an actual job. Yeah. So while she was running for that, um, you know, I just thought, let me get a story of her. She's getting into politics. I thought, yeah. why not? You know. Yeah, it's very noticeable. Yeah, upcoming person. Yeah, yeah, I was like, you never know, you know. And then mm. now, now, now she's a congresswoman. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, whoa, you know, I interviewed her. So it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very weird, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just her. Like I, I interviewed a lot of like known people in the community. Um, you know, I interviewed Armanta, for example. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine now. Um, Hodan Alaya, Elena Aristo, who passed yeah. away. Yeah. And um, I think it's been, yeah, it's been four years since since she died. Mm -hmm. Today. Mm -hmm. um, today? Yeah, today, yeah. Because no we, we had a separate section for her oh. just to give her oh, a bit wow. of a... How are the yeah. chances? Yeah. yeah. So um, I shared all my story. And um, yeah, so I got her story. And then, yeah, unfortunately, what happened happened. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was interesting because many people were like, how did you get like her story or like how did yeah. you get you know things that she hasn't even shared with others mm -hmm. how did you get it and i was like i i got it because you know i messaged her i said hey do you want to get involved in the project and then within that same day she sent mm -hmm. me a photo mm -hmm. so that was one of the oh, few that okay, i didn't get yeah. um that i didn't get uh, an image like i didn't take an image yeah she took it yeah and she sent me like a story of hers like within a day and i yeah. was like oh wow that's just amazing. a genuine human connection. Yeah, so it just goes to show she was a very genuine individual, you know. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Do you want to talk about who was that? Hodl. Yeah, because we want to <coughs> give yeah. a special mention as well. Yeah, because I was going to say with the Holland one, uh, it was a, it's an interesting one uh, because obviously, I, I, I'd i say around like 2016, that's when I was proper like just watching any YouTuber, Somali, any Somali creatives out there. I was just searching for them. Um, and surprisingly, I saw Sheko Sheko on there, which I used to watch their, yeah, their stuff. Shaka, Shaka, uh, yeah. And then Mo Musa, who we're friends with now. Uh, and Hodan Naleo as well was one of them, probably the biggest one from all of them. And um, it was the first time where it was kind of like, the way she would showcase Somalia wasn't like, oh, look, we're actually all okay. It was like, in a way of just kind of like whitewashing it, it was, it was done in such a good way of like, just showing normal people doing normal things but then it was like okay cool it was that, that normality i liked because it wasn't like performance it wasn't anything extra to show oh look how brilliant we are it was normal people doing great things whether it was in america or somalia i really loved the somalia travels as well because yeah, it was yeah. just showing the dagan and the culture and the yeah. country um and it's like her whole creative life you could say she was promoting somalia in a positive light 
and uh, the other side was like the media which promotes Somalia even as you said like in a way that's like tarnishing and dangerous and yeah. you shouldn't go there and all this kind of stuff and then the the tragic I guess irony of it that how she died was because of the things that the other side were talking about which is like through terrorism and all this kind of stuff here yeah, yeah. where her whole life was promoting against that yeah. but it's, it's kind of like it's a it's an interesting one for any creative and like someone like you for example that is focusing on somalis and somali sideways is like how do we deal with the issue of you on one hand promoting us but then us on the other hand also damaging us because there that is like two sides of the same wing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can say how great we are, but then someone will do something that'll show how how destructive we are. So it's like how do you find that kind of balance in, in your work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think when um when I start to portray Somalis in a positive way, mm. um, you know, obviously I'm I'm one human being yeah. and um there are many Somalis out there that are doing good work. Yeah. So everyone is doing pretty much different things, but everyone's having at the same time one objective. Yeah. You know, which is to change the misconceptions. Yeah. On how people view us. Yeah. So, yeah, like um, it's a collective effort, mm. and of course there are some that are trying to derail us. Yeah. Mm. And, um, put us in a negative sort of way or negative portrayal. Yeah. Um. But at th- you know this is um, this is a fight at the end of the day, yeah. mm-hmm. and um, you, you got know, a fight I, we believe in. Yeah, well. exactly, yeah. and it's a fight that you know that I'm seeing a lot of Somalis involved in mm. now than before. Yeah, like when I started the Somali Sideways project, there was very few people that in the creative space. Yeah, and now there's like oh my goodness, so there's many, a lot people, of, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. so many. Yeah. Um, even like podcasts is a form of creative uh, yeah, outlet, yeah. and there's mm-hmm. so many podcasts out there mm-hmm. of Somalis. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's 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 great to see. It's great to see. Yeah. Um, I sometimes I think to myself like, w- you know, was I sort of the catalyst in some way with like photography? Yeah, I, I like to say to some extent maybe yeah, I'll, I'll definitely played a part. Yeah, yeah. 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 and um, some people have even messaged me to say, hey, like you know, I I see you as a role model. I see the yeah. work that you're doing, and I'm gonna do something. Yeah. about it. my in my in my community wherever it is yeah, yeah. um mm-hmm. you know people have even used my 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 work or yeah. my books as academic uh purposes yeah, so people yeah. doing dissertations with it people sending me emails saying hey i'm writing a paper on um, somali like creatives and changing perception and yeah. all this stuff mm-hmm. um and you know media and conflict and all these yeah. things mm-hmm. and we want to use you as a primary source yeah I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, yeah. I never thought like, you know, this this would be an academic it, yeah. sort of, yeah, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, even non-Somalis, there's one person who is from Greece who was doing um, uh, a project on 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 media um, and uh, something about East Africa, not yeah. just Somalia. Mm. And she saw my project, and then she just messaged me and she said, "Hey, I'm doing my dissertation. Can I can I do it?" And I said, "Yeah, why not? You know." can do it yeah. Mm. so yeah it's um and and this book in particular is actually at my uni um so yeah, that's okay. where i graduated yeah, yeah, and yeah, did yeah. my master's so um you know and it's in the somali section so anyone that's in there you can try um, to check yeah, it out yeah. my book is there and people can check it mm-hmm. so yeah it's uh it's amazing to see where ha- this has led to yeah that, of course um, but yeah alhamdulillah always mm-hmm. Um, coming back to the book in terms of um, writing as well, like what was the like when you were putting it together and publishing it? Like what was the actual process like for you? And because uh, we we interviewed other authors and we tried to hear about a bit about them. Because for us, both of us, we started this podcast because we both were writing and interested in, in publishing books ourselves, and one day becoming authors. Um, so what was the, so what was the, the process like for you? And um, was there any uh, problems you encountered? Any issues during the research process, during the publishing, or when you're complaining it? So what was it like for you? Yeah, so um, that particular book, Somali Sideways, uh, mm. photo book. This one. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm always pointing something. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if people can see. <laughs> 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 I hope they can. <laughs> but um, this book in particular um, uh, was through a publishing house called Luh Press. Mm-hmm. And um, before I started any of this, when I had the idea of doing the book, um, you know, I thought to myself, I don't know where to start because... I've never done it before. That was before yeah. Amazon publishing. Yeah, before Amazon, before getting a publisher, anything. Like, I just thought, 
how if I were to do a book, how, how would I go can about I do it? it? Yeah, yeah, how would I go about it? So then normally when people tend to think, um, you know, like doing a book, you would think the big house, like the big publishing companies, you know, Penguin mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know, all these all these companies. And you think to yourself, would they ever do like anything um, about Somalis? Or I thought to myself, for some reason, it's a dance sort of industry. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought to myself, no, nah, I'll probably do something else. But then I thought, how, what am I going to do? So then I, I shared online, like, are there any like publishers out there, Somali, non-Somali, me it, yeah. it didn't matter mm-hmm. and this brother from leicester got back to me and uh his name is muhammad artan and he's based in uh, leicester all right and the company is called Luh press yeah. so but the problem with that was i've never published a book mm-hmm. and his publishing house focuses on quran islamic mm-hmm. studies right. somali history okay, somali culture yeah, yeah. somali language um and but then doesn't that kind of fit in with what you, you but you in terms do? of him doing a book like or project like mine he's never done yeah. right. so it was new to him mm-hmm. and then obviously me i've never published a book so it was new to me mm-hmm. so both of us were like doing this project on yeah. a like first time basis yeah or, learn as you um, go yeah we were just learning as we go so yeah. it took about a year f- for us to um i mean i would say him because he he did like the design the front and the back the right. letters right. With the image inside right um yeah, and the the back and what about the inside. formatting, like some the some of the pages were full page where it was one picture yeah. and then some yeah, of them so weren't. He, yeah, he did the formatting. Okay. Um, for me, it was just the content, like I had the information, um, and then I just sent it to him, mm-hmm. and then he would just send it, send me an email or like message me on WhatsApp saying, "Hey, like, do you like this? Do you like that? Do you like yeah. this? Do you like that?" And then it took about a year, and then it got released online in February of 2018. Right. Okay. And then I had my first ever book event in July 2018. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How did it feel once you had it in your hands? Like actually the real tangible thing that you've made? It's it's indescribable. I can't, yeah. I can't explain it. Um, it's it's like it's priceless. Like yeah. there's no mon- money can like there's no m- amount of money that can be like, OK, like this. The yeah. feeling. Of yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on how much, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Amazon says different, yeah, brother. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, it depends, but yeah, yeah. I mean, all seriousness, publishing a book um, or, or having a product that you've done, yeah, whatever it is, it's, yeah, it's I can potentially go to the hands of many other exactly. people, though, yeah. yeah. So people can have this book tangibly, um, people taking pictures and tagging me, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, at events as well. But what was interesting um about the first book event mm. was that um the people that i i got the speakers or the people the people that i got um, that were involved in the project yeah they were on stage as well okay so the pe- there were four people and two guys two girls and those individuals were the first people that were involved yeah. in the project right so i thought instead of making it about me let me get the people that were involved yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they were on stage and then was, was that just by chance that they were there as well? No, I invited them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. I had the like the idea formatted yeah. in my head. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, so then they got on stage and then yeah, there was a host asking them questions, yeah. how you got involved and and then there was me, um, and then there was a bit of poetry. Um and then yeah, I signed some books that I had with mm-hmm. me. And yeah, that was it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely incredible yeah. feeling. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, uh, another thing, my dad was there too. Um, surprisingly, yeah, that's cool. I was um, about to ask about it. That's though. a nice yeah, PR yeah. move. <laughs> so he just yeah. came in with one of his boys. Um, and then I was like, "Oh, that's it. Oh, snap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hope he doesn't embarrass me. Um, hope he doesn't uh, ask some girl, hey, like, what do you think of <laughs> <him?" laughs> Yeah, but alhamdulillah, it never happened. But um, yeah, it was. I saw him and. Yeah, he was just like perplexed. He goes, oh, so this is what you've been like working yeah. on. Yeah. And, you know, I don't kind of blame them because with the old generation, unless they see something mm. like with their oh, own yeah, eyes. Yeah, they just won't understand. They can, yeah, yeah, they won't understand it. So if you were to explain to them and, yeah. and whatnot, they'd be like, oh, yeah. But then when you actually show them, you're like, hey, this is what I've been doing yeah. in the past like few years or even a year doing the book. Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it now. I understand. Yeah, yeah, when this them is coming to an event as well, seeing people yeah. Yeah, excited about this They're book. They're like, oh, he's really out yeah. here doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I, don't, I don't blame them. The old yeah. generation, they like, unless you see something mm-hmm. tangible, they're like, okay, this is great. You know? yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. One thing I was going to ask as well, because obviously you said you did, um, you had your Instagram that was personal before and you then started switching up to Somali Sideways. The photography you were taking beforehand, 
was it also people standing sideways was it that always the concept or did you change it later on yeah that's a good question so um when i changed the project it was just random photos so i'll just take photos randomly yeah and then i'll i'll, I'll post it um, i changed the, pre- uh, the 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 title and the the, the instagram page yeah. to somebody sideways because i took a photo of my friend mm. and it was a random chance that I took a photo because we were in the garden and I wanted to take a photo of um, of the garden itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was there and he happened to stand sideways. So, okay, so yeah. then that's where the idea came. Yeah. And then I taught him about it and he was like, yeah, this is weird, man. <laughs> I don't know, bro. He goes, just let me share it and yeah, see where yeah, it goes. Yeah. He goes, okay, but don't mention my name though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I won't mention your name. And then after like a while, I started getting, asking people if they yeah. wanted to get involved. So I asked people in the circle, took photos and then and then that's when the storytelling aspect mm. came about and i thought why don't i create a platform where like people can share their stories yeah. with the image with you the know? image yeah, yeah so then it's not just a random image yeah so then i started asking people questions and then that's how the idea came uh, yeah. about because to be fair it's unique um yeah. the, the sideways i mean it's it's unique in a sense of like to you as well when when yeah. someone goes oh the sideways photos or smiley sideways it's like everything kind of funnels that towards i guess what you were doing yeah which i always find interesting um that that moment of like inspiration yeah when it comes and you actually come up with something and then it happens to also be pretty unique yeah towards towards what you're doing yeah yeah, that's serious man yeah thank you man conscious of time so i want to ask two more questions um one um so obviously the book's about all the different people out there but i want to hear a story from you like during your whole and wide travels what's the most interesting thing you've seen or experienced yeah, just imagine you're standing sideways you've had a photo <laughs> <you're> taken <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well when i started the project or now uh, from from start to finish like in terms of your just in your life in general give us a random thing that was like wow that really caught my eye like i would have never thought that would have happened um that's a good question oh i, I have a, i have one so I don't know if you've seen on on my Twitter, but there was a there was a lady who was at uh, my local Tesco's, mm-hmm. and um, I was just doing normal shopping, and she wanted some help because she wanted something from the top shelf, mm. and because I'm a tall guy, I was like, "All right, um, what do you need?" Yeah. She goes, "I want this item," and then I gave it to her, um, and then she paused, and I said, "Like, you know, is everything all right?" And she <laughs> said. No, but you're like, are you Somali by any chance? <laughs> and normally, when people ask me that question, I don't know whether to say, especially if Where they're non-Somali. From? Yeah. Especially, oh, she's like uh, white, basically. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know what to say. So I said, like, I'm British, but I'm originally from Somalia. Mm. She goes, Oh, I, th- I thought so. And I said, <laughs> You don't know what that could mean. Like, yeah. Well, what do you mean exactly? <laughs> well, what, why would you say that? Yeah. And she goes, Oh, because there's this. Um, uh, a book that I came across uh, yeah. called Somali Sideways, mm. um, and you know, so and she was talking about this one, yeah, oh, um, about yeah. the women's stories, yeah. Right. yeah. So then I said, um, okay, and she was like, yeah. So have you heard about it? And I was like, okay, <laughs> <let me entertain." laughs> so I thought let me entertain it. I said, yeah. oh no, like I, ha- I haven't. Like, what is it about? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, like I I got this book and it's talking about stories of women, Somali women yeah. um, from around the world, talking about their like personal stories in all like forms and i thought this is fantastic you yeah, know yeah. um you know i i don't know if you probably know the person or who runs it yeah and i said oh who's the per- what's the person's name and she said oh like Mohammed Mohammed. yeah and i said okay that's interesting and she goes why i said well you're talking to him oh so that yeah i was like <laughs> i want to drop the bike yeah. after that and she was just like in shock she said no you're not and i said yes i am <laughs> pulled out a driver's yeah. license. <laughs> i was like you know what i was like let me let me let me prove it so i thought let me uh show like the project that like, i run it mm-hmm. so i showed it to her so this is the actual project and then she looked at my phone for a while and she goes so you're the guy that did this and i yeah. said yeah and you live around here yeah. and i said yeah like um, i live like maybe five minutes from tesco yeah. and she goes oh you have to come to my house you have no to meet my way. husband oh, oh. She, you have to come i said uh, I don't know about <laughs> that, you know? as soon as like 
I think of uh, a damn person inviting me. I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys get out, get, yeah. out, get out, I knew it. I, could, I knew that was coming. Bro, it was going to be there. The way you said, oh, oh, I was like, oh, he's thinking about get out. I thought about the movie and Bro, I was like. Bro, let's bring the water down from the top. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. I thought to myself, oh man, if I go to this woman's house, yeah, I'm going to be on like BBC News or something. Yeah. British Somali last seen in Tesco's. Now nah, you'll be bringing down things from the top shelf your yeah. whole life. That's yeah, what's, what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Stop mowing the lawn and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I went, I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I thought, let me, let me, let, why not? What could be the hub? So I went. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She, I was like, okay, I was like, read the Quran, say, you never know, like, what could yeah, happen to go to yeah. someone's house, especially that's no Muslim. I was like, stop, Allah. I was outside the house. She goes, oh, are you going to come in? I said, yeah, just give me a minute. <laughs> stop, Allah, stop, Allah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, And then I put my right foot in, went inside. I was like, okay. So, and then she goes, oh, come inside properly, close oh, the door. And oh, I said, wow. okay, it's not my house, but all right. So, close yeah. the door. And then, I go inside, I'm like, I'm walking in slowly, and I see her husband sitting. Oh, I'm talking to Somali. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been. And he's sitting sideways. He's, he's ready. That would be funny, man. If I saw that. He's like, I oh, want you to man. paint me. I would have cried, man. If paint, I saw me, that. paint me like one of your Somali <laughs> girls. <laughs> I would have cried, man. I would have cried. So, so, yeah, he was just sitting there. And then he was, and then she was explaining to him, like, oh, yeah, like, remember that book that I got? Mm hmm. This is the guy that wrote it. And she goes, and he goes, oh, you're the guy? And I said, yeah, that's me. And then he didn't believe me, so I showed him again. And he goes, <laughs> oh my God, like, that's amazing. What are the chances? We were just talking about you last night. Damn. And I was like, oh yeah, well, that's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm here. And then she goes, oh, you have to take a photo of me holding the book. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, cool. All right. And then I thought, okay, I took the photo. Yeah. And then she goes, oh, can I, se should I send it to you? I said, yeah, why not send it to me? And then, yeah, like, you know, typical British, like, you know, biscuits and, and rich tea and yeah, dead yeah. biscuits. And I like rich, rich tea, man. This rich tea, no man. No way. Rich tea no. is shocking, man. With a, with you a, with don't a nice cup of tea. Yeah, bro. Nah, oh, bro. Oh, <laughs> PG tips. Another podcast just about that. <laughs> <laughs> PG tips and all that. I don't, yeah. yeah. PG tips is the what? Yeah, I've been drinking Somali tea for the longest. Now yeah, yeah. I'm into like Karak tea. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same thing almost. Yeah. No, 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 no. Big difference. Big difference. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Finish like your story, tea, man. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um, I took the photo and then a couple of days I was trying to process what happened. Mm. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Let me share it online. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, how can I share it? Where would I share it? So at the time I was like, you know, let me share it on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and I think I had like a thousand like followers. Uh, Twitter, I would say, was my least active yeah. social media. And then I shared that story. And then I was like, okay, I shared it like in a sequence of how I, sh I told you guys. Mm -hmm. And then I, I shared the image and then went to sleep. The next day I turned on the internet and my phone wouldn't stop buzzing for 30 minutes. Damn. And then I was like, What's going on? So I went on my Twitter. Yeah. People retweeting the whole story, sharing. Do you feel? I think I saw this. Was she yeah. like sitting on the table? Sitting on the sitting table. table. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. No, sitting I saw it. That, yeah, was, that yeah. was the thing that I shared. That was it. And yeah. it reached like it came to a point where like MPs were te tweeting it. Yeah. Um, politicians like uh, NGOs. My uni saw it. Oh yeah. Um, other uni mm -hmm. saw it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just foundation saw it. People saw it. It was just like crazy. It's actually a really cool story. Like it's, it's better than I, I, I was like, I, I didn't know what to expect when I asked you the question, but that's <laughs> yeah. actually an amazing story. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's something that happened last year. So mm -hmm. yeah. it was something that I, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever forget that. Mm -hmm. I'll ever forget that. Especially how, when I shared online, like it just, yeah, how just people took to it. Yeah, and took how to people it. took it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely Tell something. Tell you what, man, I have to start loitering around Tesco's yeah. shelf. <laughs> Just we're hoping for cool. someone to All say. Right, yeah. We're gonna wrap it up here. So yeah, <laughs> um, thank you very much. No You've been a great guest. Uh, thank I'll you make guys sure for having me. Yeah, man. yeah, people will check out the book. Some other sideways. Um, oh. There's the women's stories, and there's the third book, uh, which was probably the second book actually. Yeah, which, so it's uh, it's the ebook of that basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so I, yeah, I normally say two books. Yeah. So we um, put them all in the description. Check them out. Make sure you buy them. Uh, we're gonna support our boy here. 
Um, yeah, uh, right. Keep on the projects. So yeah, we want to make sure that these kind of projects are are published as well and um, go uh, go even further than uh, the local Tesco's. And then uh, yeah, maybe you'll hear some stories by in Brazil or something. And yeah, <laughs> right. um, it's been your boys from Inspire, joined by our special guest Mohammed Mahmoud from Somali Sideways. Uh, enjoy, and yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Paper Charles podcast. If you like this episode, please leave a review, comment, like, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on all our socials. Keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. <laughs>